righteous music my speakers uh -huh. nothing but righteous music my speakers uh -huh. nothing but righteous music my speakers uh -huh. it give you that good feeling and some cool uh -huh. nothing but righteous music my speakers uh -huh. nothing but righteous music my speakers uh -huh. nothing but righteous music my speakers uh -huh. give you that good feeling and some cool Nothing but righteous music, my speakers pump Bumping that truth music, make these crackers jump This ain't no tight jeans flow, straight fringes Baggy jeans, my sisters represent well With dresses below their knees I was a little young and acting real wild Praise the most high, I haven't seen trouble in a while We shine bright like the sky when the sun is out You wanna see real brotherhood, come and check us out Nothing but righteous music, my speakers pump. Nothing but righteous music, my speakers pump. Nothing but righteous music, my speakers pump. It give you that good feeling and some goosebumps. Nothing but righteous music, my speakers pump. Nothing but righteous music, my speakers pump. Nothing but righteous music, my speakers pump. Give you that good feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on with the Mac News, man? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we're getting. You doing it right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get some Mac News. We're up here at the Hanukkah service, you know what I'm saying? Doing it real big. Lions of Israel, AOC, you know what I'm saying? HOD, HOI, HOI, you know what I'm saying? We all been here having a beautiful time, you know what I'm saying? Mac News in the building. Boom, Yashallah. You know what I'm saying? Shalom. 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 Shalom.
because it's a commandment of the Most High, and our history needs to be told to our people. Okay? So it's about the rededicating of our temple, and it's about commemorating the heroic and great acts of our forefathers, the Maccabees. Okay? So with that, let's get started. First Maccabees 1, verse 1. The book of First oh, Maccabees, okay. chapter 1 okay. and verse 1. Okay. And it happened after that, Ale <laughs> it happened after that, that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian. Now, wait, really quick. In the Bible, in the Bible, how can I say this? Okay, in the Bible, you have a man that's, well, I say it this way, in the Apocrypha, in the story of Esther, what is Haman referred to? In the Apocrypha, what do they call Haman in the Apocrypha, nationality-wise? Agagite. An Agagite and a Macedonian. Right. Okay? Now, when you do the history on the Agagites yeah. and the Macedonians, Agag goes back, Agag was uh, a grandson, I believe, of Esau. Okay? So it's showing you how they play with names. You'll read Macedonian here, but in the Bible you'll read Edomite. Okay? So it's, it's a way you can connect and know who's who. In the Bible it calls Haman an Edomite, and in the Apocrypha it calls Haman a Macedonian. So we're reading about Philip the Macedonian. This is Alexander's father. So if Haman was a Macedonian, and he was an Agagite, and he was an Edomite, what does that make Philip? What does that make Alexander? What does that make uh, uh, Antiochus? It makes them Edomites. Okay? So it's so a way you can connect the dots and know who's who. All right? Read on. First uh, Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1. And it happened after that, Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persian and the Medes, that he resigned his reigned. stead, I mean, he reigned his stead the first over Greece. So it says he reigned in his stead the first over Greece, like Dan brought out the other night. In Greece at that time, you had separate city-states. So what this guy did to uh, bring it up, to, so you can understand, is he kind of brought everybody together. That's why it says he, he was the first over Greece. They had many people rule over Greece before in each city, separate, uh, each separate city state. So he brought everybody together in Greece, okay, to fight against the Persians because they were separate. But to come to uh, when the Persian Greek wars came, they all came together to go against the Persians. Con, everybody understand? Uh -huh. Verse two. And made many wars. And it says made many wars. I want to say this. When we read this, this didn't happen. This didn't begin with Alexander. These wars go back to, uh, uh, what's the dude's name? The one that lost the war against the Greeks. His father, his grandfather. Artaxerxes. No. He lost to Artaxerxes. Okay. Anyway, this war started. This war was... Over 500 years. That's why it says many battles. They lost the war, okay? And what we're reading in this history is the get back, okay? They lost the war to the Persians, and Alexander was that get back. He was the get back for the Greeks on the Persians. Okay, read. And won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth. Cyrus, that's his name. This began with Cyrus the Great, okay? All of that time, Cyrus the Great defeated the Greeks. They held that hatred in them all those years. And, and like I said, when Alexander rose up and came in instead, he was the one to get that get back. His father, Philip, couldn't do it. So he came up and got that get back. Verse 3. And went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations, insomuch that the earth was quiet before him. Meaning he took down all nations and conquered everything. Whereupon he was exalted, and his heart was lifted up. So it, when you look at Esau today, that, that um, idea of manifest destiny and world domination, that's where he, that, that spirit been in them from way back then. Way back then. So American Edomites didn't start that. All right? This was a spirit that was in them from way back in history. Read. Verse 4, and he gathered a mighty strong host. 
and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. And after, verse 5. And so that's after, what went down. When they took down nations, nations became tributaries, meaning they had to pay that man going forward. Read. Verse 5. And after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Verse 7. Wherefore he called his servant. I mean, verse 6. Wherefore he called his servant such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So those generals, who knows the names of those generals? Any captain, give me these four generals. Go ahead, my lot. Ptolemy Lagos. You had Ptolemy, Seleucid. Uh, Lysimachus. You had Lysimachus and Cassander. Those were the four. He had many generals, but those were the four that was close to him that came up with him. Okay, read. Verse 7, so Alexander reigned 12 years and then died, and his servants bare rule every one in his, his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. So the Bible says when they came into power, that evils were multiplied on the earth. This right here was the beginning of our Hellenization. So those are the evils that was multiplied. It was many atrocities done to our people. Okay? And our people were, uh, the ultimate atrocity was our people were forced to forget our laws. Okay? And I said forced to forget our laws. Okay, read. Verse 10. And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, surname Epiphanes, son of Antio Antiochus the king, who had been an hostage at Rome. And he reigned in the 130th and 7th year of the kingdom of the Greeks. So this guy that we're reading about, Antiochus Epiphanes. Epiphanes means God manifests. He thought he was God on earth. Okay? So it says that this guy was a hostage. Go to, let's read about that history really briefly because we want to get this service going. 1 Maccabees 8. <coughs> yeah. Start with verse 1. Mm -hmm. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 8, verse because 1. At that time, you had the Persians on the scene, you had the Greeks on the scene, and you had Rome that was on the rise at that time as well. They were coming up as a mighty, mighty nation too. Read. First Maccabees, chapter 8, verse 1. Now Judith had heard the f of the fame of the Romans, that they were mighty and valiant men, and such as would lovingly accept all that joined unto themselves, I mean, joined themselves unto them, and make a league of enmity, amity, amity with all that came unto them. Now, does that sound like America? America's a melting pot too. They make league with anybody that comes, any nationality can join the American military. Okay, so that was the same vibration they had going on too. Read. And that they were men of valor, of great valor. It was told him also of their wars and noble acts, which they had done among the uh, Galatians, and how they had conquered them and brought them under tribute, and what they had done in the country of Spain for the winning of the, the mines of the silver and, of, and gold, which is there. So when you read about those wars between the Romans fight and, and the Spaniards, well, they were called Gaul at the time. So when you read about that, that's what they were going for. The mines and the gold and all of that. Okay, read. And that by their policies and patience they had conquered all the places, all the place. Through it were very far from, though it were very far from them, and the kings also had came against them from the outermost parts of the earth, till they had discomforted them. Read. And given them a great overthrow, so that the rest did give them tribute every year. So they gave them tribute every year. Read. Besides this, how they had discomforted in battle Philip. So this is what we was reading about the first Maccabees, about those hostages. We're getting ready to hit that point. Read. And Perseus, king of the uh, Sittim. It's still Kittim. Yeah, Kittim. With others that lifted up themselves against them and had overcome them. So Philip lost the war. Philip lost. Read. How also Antiochus, the great king of Asia, that came against them in battle having 120 elephants with horsemen and chariots and a very great army was discomforted by them. And how they took him alive and uh, 
covenancy. Covenant for life. And and a covenancy with with he that such as reign after him should pay a great tribute and give hostage and do what and give hostages. So we go back. That's what, well. You can finish the verse. And that which was agreed upon. And give hostages. Okay. So according to First Maccabees, go back to First Maccabees one. According to First Maccabees, the hostages that he had to give up was his son. Can I okay. Say, go back to that part when you read it. Says, to his policy, to patience. Go ahead. Over here, where he says, to his policy, to patience. Did we get to that verse? Yeah, you read it. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it does. Uh, it says, to his policies. Uh, All right, yeah. I got it. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. uh, for, first Maccabees chapter 8, verse 4. And that by his, their policies and patience... They had conquered all the places. Right. So what it means by that too, the policies and patience, what was that called? What type of warfare is that? It's done by the CIA and MI6 today. What is it called? Covert warfare. Right. Covert, covert mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it shows you where Esau gets all those vibrations. Okay? It's this recurrent thing with them. All right. Was that all of uh, verse 10? Read down to verse 10 in Maccabees 8. Read down to verse 10. From 4? No, no, no. From 7 where you left off. 7. Verse 7. 1 Maccabees verse, uh, chapter 1 verse, I mean, 1 Maccabees chapter 8 verse 7. Covenant. And how they took him alive and com covenanted, covenanted. That covenanted. He, covenanted that he and such as reigned after him should pay a great tribute and give hostages. And that which was agreed upon. Mm -hmm. And the country of India and Media and Lydia. Lydia. And of the goodliest countries which they took of him and gave to King um, Eumenes. Eumenes. Moreover, how the Grecians had determined to come and destroy them. And that they, having knowledge thereof, sent against them a certain captain. And fighting with them slew many of them, and carried away captives, their wives and their children, and spoiled, and, and spoiled them, and took possessions of their land, and pulled down their strongholds, and brought them to be their servants unto this day. So when Philip lost that war, when Antiochus the Great lost that war, that was the penalty. They had to pay tribute, they had to give up lands, and they had to give up hostages. Those hostages, so you can understand, was... Um, uh, like an insurance policy. As long as I got his son, I know he ain't going to wild out. Okay? So when I got his hostages, I know that I got, I got him by, I got him in a position where I want him. He ain't going to attack me because I got his sons. Okay? So that's what those hostages was about. All right? Go back to 1 Maccabees 1. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 11. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men, who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. So that's what our forefathers was about. It says there went out many wicked men of our nation that uh, made covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For, uh, in those days, they went out of Israel, wicked men who persuaded many, saying, let us go make a covenant with the heathen. That was the sentiment, the sentiment of our forefathers. They wanted to make a covenant with Esau. They loved Esau more than they loved the Lord, the divine laws that God gave us. Okay? So we've been off as a nation. Okay, read. That are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Verse 12. So this device pleased them well. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the to the king who gave them license to, to do after the ordinances of the heathen. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the custom of the, he, the heathen. Go back. Read verse 11 one more time. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 11. In those days went out there went out of Israel wicked men. So hold on. Get second Maccabees. So when you read first and second Maccabees, it's, it's, you, you're reading pretty much the same accounts. Okay? So it's not, it's, it's not a whole lot that's different. All right? So get second Maccabees chapter 4, and I want you to start with verse 7. Okay? So it said, wicked men came out of, uh, of Israel. The book of second Maccabees chapter 4 and verse 7. 
But after the death of Seleucus, when Antiochus called Epiphanes, took the kingdom Jason. So after Seleucus died, Antiochus was released from being a hostage, and they sent him back to rule. Okay? Everybody understand? That's what we read in here. Read. The, the Jason, the brother of Onus. Jason was an Israelite. Okay? We see, it said many wicked Israelites rose up. Jason was one of those, excuse me, my, my, Jason was the N-word. Bottom line. Dirty. Okay? Read. Labored underhand to, to be high priest. He labored underhand to be high priest. That's what they all wanted. They wanted that power and that seat. And it said this dude labored underhand against his brother, Onai. Not his brother in Israel. Okay? His blood brother. Okay, he's plotting and scheming to get his own blood brother put to death so he can take that, that seat. Read. Promising unto the king by intercession 303 score talents of silver. So this is what he promised the Greeks if they gave him the throne. Read. And of another revenue, 80 talents. So it's kind of like what you see today. When you got these campaigns going on today, they got to raise an enormous amount of money. They got to pay people off and make a bunch of promises to be given that seat. Just like back then. Read. Besides this, he promised to assign 150 more if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise. And for the training of the youth into, uh, in the fashion of the heathen. And to uh, write them of Jerusalem by the name of the Antiochians. So it said many evils multiplied on earth when they came into power. This is also one of them. They made these gems. When you, when you examine, for instance, when you Google Greek art, and you look at some of those vases, and they running around behind naked. Mm -hmm. That's what was happening in these gems, man. Yeah, they made these gems butt naked. That, okay? That's what I was saying, that word pedioplasty. Pedioplasty is a word that they use to um, to basically describe what they were doing in um, in uh, in the Greeks at places of exercise. They were elder it's men like that would go on to the the youth in the and we're gonna read that. Right. The story is gonna tell us that. Now the, the word gymnasium or the word gymno. Well, who knows what that word means in Greek? Gymno. It means exercise naked. Right. Okay. So that's what they was doing in those gyms in these places of of exercise. They all would get, like, for instance, brothers in here, who, if you were naked, who would not be ashamed to be seen in front of all these people behind naked? You want to cover up yourself. These men didn't care. They running around raw, swinging at, and everything. Bananas, read. And, Go ahead. and And that was a secret that I used to, used to win all the wars back then. They, they pair them up with little boys, and then basically the grown men and the little boys, they become lovers. So the, the, young, the, young, the young boy would take care of, uh, the older man, the older man, and have his back, and then you, they go and fight other nations and conquer other countries, and they will go naked. And if you look at a lot of history portraits of history and stuff, you see them swinging the swords, and they just got the they just got the little leather flaps on, and they just running, and they conquering countries <coughs> like that, so people are scared to fight them. Okay. Hmm. Verse ten, which when the king had granted and had, and let me say this also: when you when you go into these gyms today, go. You go down in them saunas, you go in them showers, what you think you're seeing? That spirit's still alive. Good. That's what go on in them gyms. Read. Verse 10. I do my push-ups at home. Verse 10. Which when the king had granted and he had gotten into his hand the rule, he forthwith brought his own nation to the Grecian fashion. To the Greekest. Fashion. Check that out. So this is what Jason was about. Jason <coughs> wanted to bring his nation, Israel, to the Greekest fashions. Okay? Read. Verse 11. And the royal uh, privileges granted of special favor to the Jews by the means of John, the father of Eupolemus, who went ambassador to Rome for uh, amity, and, amity and aid, he took away and putting down the government, which were according to the law, he brought up new customs against the law. So he took the laws of Israel that we were given special permission to keep. He did away, he took those away and replaced them with Greek ways and Greek laws. Okay, read. Verse 12. 
for he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself and brought the chief young men under his subjection and made them wear a hat. Now such was the height of Greek fashion, an increase of heathenish uh, manners through the exceedingly profan uh, profaneness of Jason, that ungodly wretch, <laughs> and no high priest. So the scriptures say Jason was an ungodly wretch. Okay? Read. Verse 14. That the priest had no courage to serve anymore at the altar, but despising the temple. So this is what Jason did. You had Israelites that no more wanted to, to sacrifice at the altar. They didn't want to keep the laws no more. Read. And neglecting the sacrifices, passing it to the to be partakers of the unlawful allowances in the place of exercise. After the game of discus uh, called them forth, now setting by the honor of their fathers, not, not. Not, not setting by the honor of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. That's the point I wanted to get to. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. Now, you look at our people today, a lot of our people, if our people were force-fed the Bible and they had to reform themselves, man, they're going to fight against that because they like the American ways. They're comfortable. They can do whatever they want, whenever they want. But they know if they come in here, they got to conform themselves and live a certain way. And that's hard. So that's what was happening here. Our people saw a, a, a glimpse of freedom, and they ran crazy with it. They said, we don't got to keep the Sabbath no more. We don't got to do that no more. We can do this. We can do that. Let's do it. Okay? Go back to 1 Maccabees. I just wanted to bring that history out. Okay? 1 Maccabees, pick up where you left off. Uh, verse 13. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 13. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathen. Whereupon they built places of exercise at Jerusalem according to the custom of the heathen, and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant, and joined themselves to the heathen, and were sold to do mischief. Now when the kingdom was established before Antiochus, he thought to reign over Egypt that he might have uh, the dominion of the two realms. Wherefore he entered into Egypt with a great multitude, with chariots and elephants and horsemen, and, and a great navy, and made war against Ptolemy, king of Egypt. But Ptolemy was afraid of him and fled, and many were wounded to so death. So this is his own people. This is Antiochus going to war with Ptolemy because he wanted Ptolemy's land. When, 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 when uh, Alexander died, like the scripture said, all of, listen, when you look at the distance from say Greece, because he went down all the way in, all the way into Ethiopia. He went to Persia, India, Ethiopia, all those lands. And when you look at the distance, we're talking well over 3,000 miles. Okay, we're talking a distance. He conquered uh, lands bigger than what we know as the United States of America today. From New York to California, it's 3,000 miles. Okay, so he had land bigger than what we know as America today. That's what he conquered. Okay, read. Verse 20. And, after and he that, started at 19. Alexander, the freak. He started his mission at 19 years old. Went out conquering lands. Okay, read. Verse 20. And after that, Antiochus had smitten Egypt. He returned, had smitten Egypt. He returned again in the 140th and 3rd year and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with a great multitude. And entered proudly into the sanctuary and took away the golden altar and the candlesticks and the candlestick of light and all the vessels thereof. So my question now is who prophesied about that happening? Who saw that in the Bible? What we're reading about right now. What prophet told us about that? Daniel. Who? Daniel. Daniel prophesied about that, right? Really quick. Daniel 8 chapter. Joel 2. Joel 2? Mm -hmm. 
chapter 8. So Daniel saw this in the spirit. What was going to be happening? I don't want to go. Go ahead, bro. You want to bring something up? No, no. Well, I was just, go ahead. When you read Daniel, you write about Daniel, but when you read Daniel 11th chapter concerning the kings of the north and kings of the south, most of that is talking about the conflict between the Ptolemy and the Seleucid Empire. So when you read that in Daniel 11th chapter, you read about all those conflicts. There were a lot of Ptolemies. And there were a lot of uh, uh, Seleucid kings, all right? So a lot of those wars they had between them, you read in Daniel 11 chapter. It's sort of like a concise history in Daniel 11 chapter. But you read some of it here in the Apocalypse. Daniel 8 as well. Yeah. Okay? 8 and 11, really quick. The book of Daniel chapter 8, verse 11. So we read in the Apocrypha, he entered proudly into the sanctuary and took away the golden altar and the candlestick of light and all vessels thereof, and all the vessels thereof. Read the book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 11. Yea, he magnified himself to the prince of the host. So he's talking about Antiochus. Read. And by him the daily sacrifices were taken away. Read. And the place of the sanctuary was cast down. Just verse 11. That's it? Yeah. So that's what, that's what Daniel was referring to. Antiochus Epiphanes right. coming in the temple, defiling the temple, taking away the uh, furniture out of the temple. Daniel saw it in the spirit hundreds of years before it happened. Okay, read back in the Bible. Oh, that's good. Yeah, twenty-two. The book, uh, the book of uh, First Maccabees, chapter one, verse twenty-two. And the and the table of the showbread and the pouring the pouring vessel and the vial, the vials and the uh, censers of gold and the vials and the crown and the golden ornaments that were before the temple, all which he pulled off. He, he took also the silver and the gold and the precious vessels. Also, he, he took the hidden treasures which were found. And when he had taken all away, he went into his own land, having made a great massacre and spoken very proudly. There, therefore, there, were, there was a great mourning in Israel in every place where uh, they were, so that the princes and elders mourned the virgins and the young men were made feeble, and the and the beauty of the woman was changed. Every bridegroom took up lamentation, and she that sat in the marriage chamber was in heaviness. Why? Because the men were being put to death. Read. The land also was moved for the inhabitants thereof, and all the houses of Jacob was covered with confusion. And after two years fully expired, the king sent his chief collector of tribute unto the city of Judah, who came uh, unto Judah with a great multitude. Unto Jerusalem. I mean, Jerusalem with a great multitude. And spake peaceably, peaceable words unto them, but all was deceit. For when they had given him uh, credit, credence, he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. And when he had taken the spoils of the city, he set it he, he set it on fire and pulled down the houses and the the houses and the walls thereof on every side. So they like to say that they rocked you to sleep. That's what he did. He rocked our people to sleep, got our people comfortable, made our people believe that he was uh, uh, trustworthy, and he turned. Okay, and destroyed us. So like 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 guys say, man, you can't trust the damn forks, the fork tongue people, man. They've been liars since the since the womb. No, my okay, neck hurt. Verse thirty two. But the women and the children my neck hurt. Uh, took they captive captive and possessed the cat the cattle. Then built then built it they the city of David with a great and strong wall. And a mighty uh, and with mighty towers, and made it a stronghold for them. And they put the, uh, therein a simple nation, wicked men, and fortified themselves therein. They stored it also with armor and viscules. And when they had gathered together the spoils of Jerusalem, they laid uh, them 
up there, and so they became a sore snare. So they set up, when you read in the Bible about garrisons, this, this is pretty much what it was. They set up police stations or garrisons in our land to watch us. Mm -hmm. Okay? Read. This is like you got these different precincts in our, in our neighborhoods today. Watch it. They put them big old cameras up, and they watch every move you make. Okay, read. Verse 36. For it was a place to lie and wait against the sanctuary, and then an evil adversary to eat, uh, Israel. Thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it, insomuch that the, the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them, whereupon the city was made an habitation of strangers. So Israel was leaving, and it was none but heathens taken, uh, in our dwelling in the land at that time. Read. And became strange to those that were born in her, and her own children left her. Her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. Her feasts were turned into mourning, her Sabbaths into reproach, her honor into contempt. Verse 40. As had been the, her glory, so was her dishonor increased, and her excellency was turned into mourning. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. Now stop. Without going off into that history too tough, but when you read this, you begin to paint a picture in your head. Uh, our people are deceived with that churchy spirit of Jew and Gentile or Jew and Greek. When they read about Jew and Gentile or, or there's no difference between Jew and Greek, they're not understanding that the Greeks that, that's talking about is the Israelites that were forced to follow the real Greeks. Okay? It's not talking about the, the actual Greeks like Antiochus and Alexander. It's talking about our people that were dwelling in that land. Okay? Those are the Greeks that you read about in the New Testament. Those are the Gentiles that you read about in the New Testament. They were the ones grafted in. The Hellenistic Greeks. The Hellenistic Greeks. I, 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 uh, absolutely. Were the ones grafted in. Not those white folks. Everybody understand that? Read. Verse 42. And everyone should leave his lords. Mm. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. And what did our people do? They, they agreed. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. So and many of our people consented to it. Read. And sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. For the king had sent letters by messenger unto Jerusalem and the city of Judah. And they should follow the strange laws of the land and, for, and forbid burnt offers, offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbaths and the festival, the festival days. So when the Greeks took over, man, they wanted to stamp out every bit of, of, of our culture. Okay? If you was found with, 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 with a Bible, that was death. If you was found circumcised, your kid was found circumcised, that was death. If you called yourself, and you read the scripture to tell you that if you even called yourself a Jew, you couldn't even use that name. And what happens after 10 years? You don't te he don't teach his son, and then his son grows up, and he don't teach his son, and then his son grows up, my bad, bro, and he don't teach his son. That history within 30 years, that history is, is very, very like diminished. Mm -hmm. Okay? And shortly after that, the history is no longer in existence. You don't even, our, our kids don't even know it no more. Right. Read. Verse 46. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Verse 47. Set up, set up altars and the groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. Now, when this was happening, what was our people's answer to this? What did we do? Hmm? We went into them catacombs. Okay, we made underground cities to worship. We couldn't do it up top where we could be seen, so we made our own underground cities to where we could worship. Okay, and when you look at uh, the images of those catacombs and the images painted on those walls, that's our forefathers. Unmistakably black images, afros, beards, unmistakable images of our forefathers in the catacombs. So that's why we were in there, because we wanted to worship and keep the commandments of the Most High. We were being uh, uh, put to death if we were keeping the commandments in open. Okay, read. Right. Go ahead. But 
Uh, the point that he was making about the Hellenization of, of Israel. See, that's why, you know, when you read the scriptures, you always want to bring it up to date. So now that we hear, you know, most of our people here in America and dispersed throughout the earth, but now the Hellenization is still going on in America. We're still being Hellenized, you understand? And forced to keep the customs of the other nations and Esau and so forth. See, so when when they come out and they throw Christmas on our people and the holidays mm -hmm. and, and, and their penal code and all that, mm -hmm. you're being Hellenized, mm -hmm. understand? But we're now, we're almost in the end now, right? So now the Mosai is bringing, bringing us the truth, bringing us the Mashiach, the Havashai. And he said, like the scripture says in Ephesians, in time past, you were once like Gentiles, but now you are the sons of the Mosai. So coming out from the world of, of being Hellenized, being taught the Greek way, Greek and Roman way, now you bring it to date. So the same thing happened in America. But now Yahweh Shai is waking, waking our people up to the truth. So no more Hellenization, now you woke up. So that's why it's, it's high time now for us to be recognized you know, that they are the Israelites and they are the real Jews. This is it. That's that's we ain't here tonight keeping the Feast of Dedication. Right. And the majority of our people in the club right now, or at least in the shower, getting ready for the club. Okay, so you know, praise the Most High, man. Your mind is not where the rest of our people. The Most High separated and called you out. So praise the Most High, man. If that spirit is not heavy on you, you know, that clubbing and that that wild spirit. All right, read verse, verse forty-eight. Four, verse forty-eight that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanliness and profanation. And profanation. So they wanted them to be homos. They wanted them to eat unclean foods, keep uh, um, unholy days. Okay, like our people in the summertime with that uh, West Indian Day Parade. That, that, when, when I read this, it kind of makes me think of things like that. At least not now today, but back in the 90s. That thing was wild. It was commonplace to see a breast. It was commonplace to see guys jump from the side of, of the road over the uh, barriers and freak up on girls. Okay? The drinking, the fighting, and the, the, the total reveling juve. It was bananas. Okay, go ahead, bro. Nah, I just wanted to say, it's funny, man, the word bacchanal. Right. We're going to read it. It's coming in. Exactly. It's coming in. And yeah, Benjamin and Trinidad, they call Bacchanal Festival. He's a Jamaica too. So it goes, ties all the way back into the Greek culture. They say Bacchanal, but the Apocryphal calls it Bacchus. Bacchus. That was but that's, it's the same that's thing. That's where they get the it from. God. Exactly. Okay? The pagan god of, of, of sex Revolution. and orgy. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, read. Verse 49. To the end they might... Forget the law and change all the ordinances. And when you look at our people today, we forgot the law. We don't have it written in our hearts anymore. Read. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he should uh, he should die. He said he should die. In the selfsame manner wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. Then many of the people were gathered unto them to wit every one that forsook the law, and so they commanded evils in the land, and drove the Israelites into secret places, even wheresoever, uh, wheresoever they should flee uh, for secure. So that's what we were going into earlier, those catacombs. Okay, that's what our people did. That was our remedy uh, for keeping the Most High's commandments. We built underground cities. Okay, read. Now the 15th day of the month Kaslu, in the 140th and 5th uh, year, they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar and built idol altars throughout the city of Judah on every side. So it says they, now in the 15th day of the month Kaslu, in the 140th and 5th year, they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar. So when you, when you imagine what was happening, they would go into our temple, okay, pull down all of our righteous and holy relics, okay, set up their own gods, okay, built their own altars and sacrificed swine in our temples. 
That's what they were doing to our people. That's what Judas Maccabees and them was fighting against. Okay? Come on, bro. The, the, the head god that they put in the temple was um, Zeus. Yeah, Zeus is the it. god of thunder. Right, now, where do you read about Zeus in the Bible? Because the, the Greeks stole him. He's a re, he's a re, he's white man remixes everything. Zeus is also known as Baal. Same God. Baal is the God of rain. Remember when the when they um, during the times they have when they were praying to Baal for rain? It's a God of rain and thunder. It's the same God. Remix. That's all.